Hey guys, how are y'all doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. And the Switch finds itself in a really precarious position, something I've talked about many times and something that I think a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with, the weirdness that is 2020. Now, I've already talked about that several times over the course of even just the past two weeks, and I did want to discuss it a little bit further and kind of explore this idea from a different angle than just like the gaming business. Uh, this is definitely the kind of video, if any recent trends, at least on my channel, are any indication, this is the kind of video that is probably going to get quite a bit of hate. I expect a lot of downvotes, I expect a lot of comments telling me that I'm a crazy person, or I'm whining or complaining or what have you. It's been a very crazy thing the past few weeks, because I really haven't been very harsh on Nintendo or any company in the gaming industry right now, uh, or recently, especially in lieu of the health situation that's obviously impacting the gaming industry and plenty of companies and their business. Obviously, that includes Nintendo. Big time, it includes Nintendo. Hence why I've talked about it so many times, and hence why I'm going to talk about it again today. But even though I don't really think I've been very harsh, a lot of people have kind of perceived it that way, maybe based more on the video titles than the content within. And so, I don't want to really get into the weeds on that, other than to say I anticipate some people maybe misinterpreting this video. And so, if you see a lot of downvotes and hate and stuff in the comments, I think that might be... A lot of where it comes from but what's kind of ironic about it is that's kind of what I also wanted to talk about today so whatever hate and negativity or even positivity that actually comes my way from this video we'll put that aside and just actually kind of get to the goods here and what I'm talking about is whether or not it's really okay to be criticizing Nintendo specifically in 2020 and I'm talking about Nintendo specifically for a few reasons one they're my favorite company as you guys know two it's the majority of the focus of rule of two review in this channel obviously is talking about Nintendo and my opinions of what they're doing and then also because this year has the health situation and so all of these things make this kind of a unique situation. And in lieu of all the weird, crazy things happening in 2020, is it okay for people or even myself to criticize or be critical of the Switch in 2020 when, let's be real, you guys, I know a lot of people don't want to admit this, but we have to admit this, the library for the Switch is extremely slow and it's very barren right now in 2020. I know people want to push back on that and a lot of people will start listing out like 93 insane probably very cool little indie games that might exist, and the few big third-party games we know coming to the Switch this year, like My Baby No More Heroes 3, like Bravely Default, like Doom Eternal in the Outer Worlds, stuff like that, Panzer Dragoon remake already launched. So yes, people can list out all of those kinds of titles, and that's fine. I, I'm not trying to disparage those titles, especially, like I said, with No More Heroes 3 being like my most anticipated game this year. But those don't really qualify as what is typically a strong year for any console, and especially for a Nintendo console, where Nintendo is the key defining factor of a Nintendo console. More so than Sony or Microsoft for their consoles, even though they make a lot of games and franchises that I also very much enjoy. With Nintendo specifically and all of their consoles, what's the reason they've been great? What is the reason we all go to Nintendo machines and hardware for? Whether they're handheld and portable machines or consoles, it's for Nintendo the company and it's for Nintendo's IPs. The most legendary IPs, the highest rated and highest reviewed IPs, some of the best selling, some of the oldest in the industry. Nintendo is the reason we go to Nintendo's consoles, their games, their characters and franchises. And so when a Nintendo console has a slow year, in my opinion, maybe some of you guys disagree with this and that's okay to disagree. My opinion is when a Nintendo console is having a slow year or a slow period, it sticks out way, way, way more than if a Sony or a Microsoft machine is having a slow year. I admit that I'll be very curious to see how a lot of you guys react to this idea. And if anyone out there agrees with me, I would think a lot of Nintendo fans would almost have to agree with this sentiment, right? I mean, Nintendo's the X factor. Nintendo is what makes Nintendo consoles great. Sony and Microsoft, again, they're great for what they do, and they have a couple of great franchises and IPs that they, you know, typically just publish, uh, and that's fine, but with Nintendo, I just think it's different, and so when we look at 2020, 
we see a slow year, a slow year from Nintendo, a slow year from their first party output. The only thing we have and know about right now is literally Animal Crossing. And I know that Animal Crossing is great and people love it. You know I'm not a fan. But I'm not going to disparage the significance of that game. It's apparently very great. My girlfriend likes it. All of you guys like it. Uh, it's selling like crazy. It reviewed well. It's a big deal. And it's also moving units. It's helping the Switch like have some of its best sales it's ever had already, you know, three and a half years in or whatever. So obviously the game is a big deal, but it's the only thing we have. And so when I look at 2020 and when I've discussed it over the course of the past, you know, week or two in my last few videos, yes, I've been critical from the perspective of acknowledging that it's a slow time for Nintendo and for the Switch. You know, and that even does kind of include third-party stuff, you guys. I mean, yes, there's a couple of games. There's two ports of games that already released on consoles coming. There's No More Heroes and Bravely Default, and those are those are four great games. But even outside of that, there's not a whole lot. Bayonetta 3 would be a huge boon in the Switch's cap in 2020 if or when we find out that game is releasing this year. But that game is even still a mystery, so who even knows? We're literally looking at the one Nintendo game that already released Animal Crossing, and then four third-party games, two are exclusive, two are already released on other consoles, and I just think it's okay to talk about Nintendo having a slow year in 2020. I just think it's fine. I think that what happens is something that we've all obviously seen happen, which is, you know, the hyper defenders of Nintendo come out of the woodwork when you say or hint at something that isn't complete and utter uncompromising praise. And a lot of people sometimes get a little bit too emotional. They get a little bit too much in their feelings about it. And so they can't see outside of their tunnel vision of, I love Nintendo or XYZ company. They're great always. And I cannot stand the fact that you're not acknowledging it right now. And you're saying anything that's outside of my tunnel vision of perfection when it comes to, in this case, Nintendo. We're all used to, it's the internet, man. It's the internet. We know that this happens. We know that a lot of people, usually very young people, but not always, usually though, they just come out of the woodwork and they've got these things to say and they can't possibly fathom that you can't see Nintendo's 2020 as amazing or you you can't see that it's going to end up being a surprise amazing year. So when I've talked about if Nintendo has decided to give up on 2020 because of the health situation, which would be okay, people get upset. When I talk about maybe these Mario remaster games, if they're true and if they are real, they could be the one thing Nintendo has to save their back half of the year by having a bunch of old Mario games to re-release. And so these ideas, which to me kind of complement each other, some people see as in conflict with each other. I even had a conversation in the comments of my last videos about this exact thing and I brought up very similar points to this. And it's a curious thing to see and so it just makes one wonder, is it even, like I said in the beginning here, is it even okay to criticize Nintendo in 2020 given what's happening? And as, as I've already even said, yes, I think that that's okay. No company is perfect. No company is without flaws. No company is above criticism. And that includes Nintendo, my favorite company. Like we're obviously, as Nintendo fans, we're all on the same side here. We all love the company. We all want to see them do great. We all want to praise them when they do really well. But when things are maybe not perfect or not great, we should be able to talk about that without losing our minds, right? And uh, again, I know that essentially this whole conversation boils down to trying to dissect why people on the internet are crazy sometimes, which is a fruitless endeavor. You're not gonna get anywhere with that. And I know that too. But because I'm trying to keep this so focused on Nintendo the company and just on the current situation, I felt like it was worth talking about um, because as I've said so many times, I think this is something else people don't really hear. Like there's a mental blockage here. So try to open your minds and your ears up when you hear me say this, okay? Nintendo being slow in 2020 is okay. I do not mind, it is fine. I don't know how many times I need to say it and beat it into people's skulls that 2020 is a unique year. And I don't think Nintendo always planned to be so slow in the first four months of 2020. I think they probably planned to have already been hitting us with Nintendo Directs and new game announcements and Pikmin 4 and a new Metroid game 
and F-Zero, Star Fox, whatever other stuff we want, Mario 3D World. I think Nintendo's plan was to have already done that, but this year is weird, and so they, just like many other companies, have changed their plan, they've slowed down how they're feeding information to us, and they're probably trying to figure it out on the back end what they want to do for 2020, or, like I theorized, if they maybe want to call 2020 a wash and just give up on it and wait to come back stronger in 2021. And like, I just don't know how many different ways and times I can try to tell people that I think that's okay. I'm not saying it like it's a bad thing, like I'm mad, like Nintendo's wrong for doing it. I mean, it's 2020, you guys. This situation, it is so unprecedented. It is so crazy. And so, A, that is what's happening. Nintendo is being slow. They are holding stuff close to their chest. They might be considering calling 2020 a wash. That's a factual thing we're seeing happen right now. You can't dispute it. I don't care if you give me a list of 500 indie games on the eShop. That doesn't make Nintendo's 2020 the same quality as last year or 2017 or 2014 for the Wii U or any of their other great years or any of the great years Sony or Microsoft have ever had. A bunch of indie games on the eShop does not save Nintendo's 2020. Even if they're great games and you love them, I think that's fine. I mean, I'm happy for you enjoy them. It doesn't change the situation. The year is factually slow. So A, it's okay to say that that's factually what's happening and B, it's okay to give Nintendo a pass or any other company a pass. I made the correlation with Naughty Dog on my last video also. That's why I'm giving Naughty Dog a pass with The Last of Us 2. I get it, 2020 is weird. Getting your games out to people is maybe not possible the way you want to. So maybe you want to have the best revenue stream possible by releasing it physical and digital at the same time to the most amount of people later in the year. That's fine, you're a business, you're allowed to do that. And then also maybe you're worried about spoilers getting out there or getting the best experience to people from an artistic perspective. If Naughty Dog needs to do that, I am allowing them that pass. Just like I'm allowing Nintendo that pass and any other company with their delays, E3 gets a pass. GDC gets a pass. I don't know how many times I can say this. It's fine. 2020 is whack, and so it's okay. I'm not mad at Nintendo, and we should all be allowed to talk about how Nintendo is being slow, but it's not a big deal. So clearly I'm getting a little bit elevated here. I think that uh, I'm surprising a little bit more passionate about this as I realized, like the more I talked about this, the more I realized, man, it is frustrating the way some people have been acting and responding to so many things. I'm, I'm not even just talking about my couple of videos. I mean, just the topics, the ideas in general. Nintendo, some people are being crappy to Nintendo. Other people are being crappy to the people who are calling Nintendo out or, or not calling them out, but talking factually about the situation. And yes, I do feel like I'm one of those people. And so, you know, people, so many, so many individuals are just struggling to understand and acknowledge the weirdness of what's happening. And so people see it as an attack on their fundamentals there they see it as an attack and or an affront on their fanship on their favorite company and so it feels like a personal attack on them and so people just get crazy and i mean hey you know what i'm not perfect i've been guilty of this same thing so many times we are all in this community people who are passionate about the things we like you know the pop culture things video games and movies and comic books and tv shows and anime we're passionate about these things my character flaw in this department has to do with Star Wars. This is where I've been guilty of doing similar things and being overly defensive in a passionate way about Star Wars. For me, it's usually defending George Lucas, who I think is like the most brilliant person almost ever, and specifically the Star Wars prequel trilogy, because I think all three of those movies are amazing. They're three of my favorite movies of all time, right along with the original trilogy. And so, yeah, I've been overly blinded by my passion in the past when I've defended you know, Lucas or the prequel trilogy in the past. I mean, luckily on the Star Wars thing right now, we're seeing a great resurgence of respect and admiration for Lucas and for the prequel trilogy, which they deserve in my opinion, obviously. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to say we all have this within us to make these mistakes and to be a little bit too crazy. But I think it's okay to just, we gotta calm down. Everyone just relax, okay? Everyone relax. And I also don't, I'll end this here. And I shared this in a tweet too. I don't want this to come off like me, like this was totally inspired by, oh, Rob got some hate and some downvotes on his videos and he couldn't handle it, so he had to make a rant about it on YouTube. 
I know that it could almost come off that way, and man, that is just not the case. I said it on Twitter. I'm not trying, I don't think I'm like above criticism. I absolutely do not think I am perfect, and I don't have a God complex. Like, you, I'm not above criticism. People can, can criticize my opinions or whatever. That's why I put my opinions out there is for the conversation. But I did see a lot of, a lot of too extreme of reactions, and I've seen it all over the internet. And so all of the above kind of inspired me to want to talk about people's reactions to Nintendo and how they're not doing anything in 2020, and people either in denial over how slow their 2020 is, or people who just can't stand that anyone would even talk about it. Any hoo <laughs> I need to call this video a wrap. I don't know how this is gonna go. People are gonna react pretty crazily to this, but you know, it's okay. Like I'm just like when I made my Final Fantasy VII video, I'm prepared. I know what I'm getting into. A lot of people are gonna feel like they were called out and attacked in this video, so they might go into extreme defensiveness and talk about I'm crazy, I'm blind, Nintendo's perfect, look at all these games, and so you know, let's have that conversation. You know, people don't need to get crazy and mean about it. We can have that conversation with myself and with other people in the comment sections. It's a, uh, it's an interesting topic. Hence why it gave me 15 minutes or whatever to just ramble on to you guys about it. I find it interesting and I guess we'll just see how it goes. You know, I've had several controversial videos in the past two weeks. My Final Fantasy VII Remake video, the one about Nintendo giving up in 2020, and the one about the Mario remasters saving 2020. Those have been some of the more divisive videos that I've seen on my channel in probably the past year or two. Uh, and it's fine, but it does inspire further conversation, which is what I'm trying to do here. So anyway, with that, this video is a wrap. Please discuss my thoughts and opinions. Share your own thoughts and opinions. Let's see where this conversation takes us. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.